In this video, we'll talk about inner class. That's right, a class inside a class. I know that sounds weird at first, but let's let me go with that. See, most of the time when you build an application, you might have a scenario where a class will be used only for that particular purpose. Okay. Uh, so let's say you have a class A and then that class needs variables, so we can do that. Example, we have a class A here and this class A can have variables, this class can have methods. So when you have this class A, this class can have variables, this class can have methods, right? Now this variables and methods only work for this class A. So if you want to access them, you have to get A class first. In the same way, let's say if you have a class where that class is totally dependent on class A, there's no other need for it. In that case, you can create a class inside the class, okay? The way you do that is by defining a class like A and then you can define a class called B inside it. Now, just the way you have class A here, I can create a variable that works. We can say variable uh, age and then we can have method as well, which is public void show. Now, we have these two things. We have a variable which is age and then we have a method which is show and then we have a class as well. So imagine a class having all three things, a variable, a method and a class. And inside this class, let's say I, have create, a, I create a method which is public void config and in this config, I will print something. Let's say in config, just to print something, okay? And I'm trying to make this example as simple as possible. That's why I'm using this class name. In real life, don't do that. Make sure that you use proper class names. And so let's say we have this scenario. Now question is, how will you call this config? So it's very easy to call show. In fact, I should print something here just to see what it prints in show. Now question to you is, how will you call this show? And then we have seen this, right? You simply have to create this object of A and then you can call obj dot show. I mean show will perfectly work right if I compile this code and run you can see it says in show. Now I want to call config. How will you do that? Do that? Of course you will say if it is a class B then you have to get object of B to call this config. Let's try. If I try to create object of B by saying B obj1 new B you can see it will give you an error. It says uh, B cannot be resolved. Oh it's not able to find B. The thing is, B is not openly available, right? B is a part of A. So if you want to refer B here, you need to say A dot B. So B belongs to A. That's why you have to say this. Okay, now why I'm doing this? So when you say if you compile this code and if I go back here, can you see that we got two classes and we have seen this, right? Every time you compile a code, you will get those number of class files. So you got a class file for demo. That makes sense. You can see we have demo dot class. Uh, you will get a dot class as well because uh, a is a class but we also got b is also class right it should have its own class file and that's right we got it we got b dot class the only thing is b belongs to a so the dollar symbol separates these two so it says b class belongs to a class and that's why it's a dollar b okay that makes sense so if you want to access b you have to say uh, a dot b that's how you access it and you can say obj1 you can see there's no problem in declaring the variable. The problem is when you say new, now how, how will you do it? If you say B, it will not work again. It will say cannot able to resolve B. In that case, if you say A dot B, no, that's not the proper syntax. The thing is, if you want to create object of B, you need object of A first. Now you will say why? I say it's, it's very simple. If you want to call B, if you want to call this show, now show is a method, right? It's a non-static method, which means if you want to call show, you need object. In the same way, if you want to access this variable age, you need object. In the same way, if you want to create object of B, you need object of A because that is a non-static method. Okay, so I'm focusing more on static here, right? Can I create a static class? Uh, yes, we'll see that in some time. But we got this object here. And now using this obj1, I can call uh, the config method. If you want to create object of a uh, inner class, which is B in this case, you need to first specify where it belongs to. So B belongs to A and then you need object of a uh, outer class, which is OBJ here to create object of inner class. And once you have that, you can simply call these methods and that will pop properly work. You can see what in show and in, in uh, config. Okay. 
Now we have also focused on a static class, right? You can also make this class as static. And we all know when you refer it to a static class, you don't need object. So basically you don't call this with the help of object. You can directly refer with a dot b. Now this will work only when the class is static, the inner class is static. It will not work for non-static class. Now, can we really make static class? Yes, we can, provided that it's an inner class. If it is outer class, you can't make outer class static. You can see it will give you error. It says, uh, illegal modifier for a class A, only public abstract final are permitted. So basically you can't use static here. Static can be used only for the inner class. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So yeah, that's the concept of uh, inner class and in the upcoming videos, we'll do something more with inner classes.